again, I'm Steve Kime, Director of Public Relations and Marketing for the City of Enid. And you know, one of the opportunities I have with my role is I get to meet a variety of individuals from all across the state, and I have a very special guest today, and they're all very special because these individuals that I get to meet and uh, learn about and interview uh, are, I call them difference makers. In a different way, they make a difference in their, their personal life and their professional life. And my special guest today is Major Ed Polito, U.S. Army retired. Major Ed, Great welcome to, to Enid. Thank you, we're, thank you for having me. Appreciate you being here, because I do know that you travel about 12 days out of the week, right? I do, <laughs> <laughs> if there's that many days, yeah. right? <laughs> Sometimes you probably think yeah. it's more than seven days a week. I know you're busy. And I'd like to share with you today a little bit about Major Ed uh, Polito and his background so you'll have an, a kind of an expectation of what our show is about today. And I'm very excited for Major Ed Polito to be, be with us today. He is the Senior Vice President of the Foles of Honor Foundation. He's the founding member for the uh, Warriors for Freedom Foundation. And I was jokingly saying that he traveled 12 days out of the week. This, this, this young man, is uh, he's a spokesperson for these organizations, and he's a spokesperson for many veterans. But he's appeared on CNN. He's been in Time Magazine, the PGA Magazine. I saw him on Fox News one Christmas time. And uh, you're, you've been in a lot of places. You've earned numerous awards. You served in Iraq, Purple Heart, Bronze Star, other awards. and. Um, a lot of medals, if you will. Thank you. So you really have that background, and right off the bat, Major Edges, thank you for your service to our great country. I appreciate that. Well, thank you so much, and I appreciate you having me on the show, uh, representing the community here in Enid, and I think uh, the surrounding uh, cities around here as well. But uh, making sure that we honor the sacrifices of our veterans, and certainly uh, this is a veteran-friendly community, and I'm just honored that I get a chance to to be a part of your show, but also to let people know my story of what I call the challenges and the triumphs and the changes after a combat experience. We know that you have a new book out, and we'll talk about that in the program a little bit later on. But right off, right off the bat, Major Ed, tell us about Folds of Honor Foundation. People have heard about it, but what is it? Well, the Folds of Honor Foundation was started by Major Dan Rooney, the F-16 fighter pilot, PGA golf professional, uh, my hero and my friend. Uh, he's based out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, F-16, you know, I got to tell you, those pilots understand that, uh, you know, the elements of not only what they do on the battlefield, but certainly how do they protect the lives of those in our country. And certainly with Vance Air Force Base uh, having an integral part of this community and more importantly, training pilots. Uh, one of the things that I learned from Major Dan was the fact that we needed to create an organization that could provide the spouses and children of the fallen and wounded educational scholarships. To date, we've awarded over 7,500 scholarships on pace to raise over $50 million wow. for our deserving military families. And then our motto is honoring the sacrifice, educating the legacy. We will never leave a family behind on the field of battle, so help us God. So with the help of, of people across the state and across the nation, to be able to award over 7,500 scholarships and then have some just integral partners involved like Bud Weiser. We've got uh, a lot of in the, in the, in the golf space, uh, right. like Titleist and Bushnell, um, which yeah. is an outdoors group. And certainly other companies like now Coke and uh, we're getting ready to do a big event with Quick Trip uh, down at okay. the uh, Atlanta Motor Speedway called the Quick Trip 500. We're going to have our own NASCAR race. So we've done a lot of great things, and I've been there practically from day one with Major Dan. Oklahoma State University, uh, of course, is where uh, his father resides, and certainly Dr. Rooney has been an integral, an integral part of what we're trying to do. So at the end of the day, Folds of Honor is making sure that we take care of these military families. And again, that uh, foundation is the Folds of Honor Foundation, and you can find that on the website. Well. Uh, I have a tendency to call you Brother Ed because I've known you for a number of years. You're Major Ed, so forgive me if I slip and say, well, Brother Ed. That's okay. Uh, because he is a dear friend, but uh, he is a patriot in my books. You served time in Iraq, and you have evidence of serving in Iraq. Tell us about your uh, service. Well, it's a very emotional uh, time uh, that I spent serving my country, uh, certainly getting the call up when you are asked to not only take the oath of office to defend the greatest nation in the world, as my father told me, it's about God, it's about country, family, 
and all of those that serve in the Armed Forces right. of the United States of America to include the enlisted and the non-commissioned officers, the backbone of our military. And for me, on August 17, 2004, it is in that spirit that I would hit that roadside bomb. It was a thing that I feel God had a calling for me um, to happen. Uh, as certainly uh, people say, wow, you know, why would you say it that way? But the thing about it is that I knew that something was going to happen on that day. I had some intuition. It did. I hit a roadside bomb at about 12.04 in the afternoon, broke the knee in three places, fragments to the left side of my body. I was in trouble. But the thing that I thought most about was my little girl back home and my wife, Karen, and certainly uh, my country. And then my faith was tested. And I would pray, and I certainly would ask that young combat medic to save my life. I remember him coming up. This is kind of funny. He'd come up to me, and he says, Man, Major, you're hurt bad. You know, if you've ever taken CPR, don't ever tell the patient that. But the thing about it is, you know, I, I had this near-death experience, and... You know, I thought about my little girl, Caitlin, mm. and thought about the fact that, you know, it flashes in front of you that you think, you know what, maybe she's not going to have her father right. to be with her in her life or, or to be at least there economically or whatever it may be um, emotionally as well in their future. And it, it dawned on me that, you know what, at the end of the day, um, I took that oath to do something bigger than myself. And ironically, the reason I took that oath was my father, and today's his birthday. And so I want to dedicate uh, this, uh, this presentation, uh, this opportunity. And, and you can say happy birthday. You know, Dad, happy birthday, want. Daddy. Uh, <laughs> I want to uh, dedicate that to him, and certainly thank you for having me on the show. To, to, because he was a Vietnam veteran, and I learned, or Vietnam era veteran, and I learned uh, during that time frame that with the downsizing and the change, they began a, became a volunteer force. And to all the Vietnam veterans out there, welcome home. Certainly, there's a lot of them in this area. And uh, come out and, and ask me to come out and speak at your events that you have. But certainly, they have a special place in my heart because when I did get injured, uh, they were the ones in the hospital saying, the mistakes made on us won't be made on you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. And, and I can tell that it just, it just comes back. I mean, you can relive that probably at, at any time. And, and we'll have a phone number on the screen later in the program so uh, to help you get in touch with Major Ed Polito. Well, you're co-founder of Warriors for Freedom Foundation. Tell us about Warriors for Freedom. Well, let me tell you, uh, just to kind of put it in perspective, I was in the hospital. I had E. coli, Ancetobacter, two staph infections, 195 to 118 pounds. And it was that time frame where they amputated my left leg on October 1st of 2004, where that evening after the amputation, I, the medication would wear off. Certainly I was in pain. You know, going to 118 pounds, you just don't do that. That's a crash diet, let me tell you. And then the thing about it is that I thought about that night, the fact that, you know, suicide, the, my mental health stressors. I had been dealing with the physical stressors for almost sure. 45 days. And all of a sudden, it's like, you know, when you do an event and you were successful and all of a sudden you get this wind down period. I was tired and I was wore out. And my family was wore out because they, did, they were just going through this roller coaster ride. And I make that comment because it was at that time where I knew that I had to do something purposeful in my future not only through the work that I'm doing with Folds of Honor, which we take care of our military families, but I also had a calling because I had individuals that were out there having mental health stressors, committing suicide, and dealing with other issues, which I call the silent wounds of war. And in doing that, you know, I would join a group called the Real Warriors Campaign, who would actually provide me the tools and the resources on what to do in supporting these men and women who come back. And then I would also learn that, you know what, they come back scarred, and what we can do as Americans is provide them support. So I, I aligned myself with a gentleman by the name of Brett Dick. Mm -hmm. His family lives in this community. Um, they have a house here. They have a food service company here locally uh, that they uh, run. And certainly he, he and another guy by the name of... Uh, of Scott Momper, who I was able to see over the weekend um, at a big event that we had, uh, they came together and said, you know what, why don't we do something for our veterans in the state of Oklahoma and in surrounding communities, to including it. And through outdoor activities, mental, 
uh, support, physical support, and what we call wellness, which includes employment, which includes all of the other opportunities, faith, and making sure that they're connected to civic organizations, kind of like the American Legion and all of those organizations sure. have done in their existence. Because I'm a member of all of those groups, when you know, VFW and the Vietnam Veterans of America, I do a lot of work with those folks, and I understand what they do. The civic-minded community, a civic-minded community can be so impactful. And what you're doing with this show is not only educating the public, but also impacting the public by saying, you know what, as a community, we, we have your pulse. And to me, that's what this organization, Warriors for Freedom, is all about. We have the pulse on what is going on across this country, but more importantly, with our vets that we're supporting. And there are other organizations that can provide sure. the high maintenance individuals the services that they need. That's not what we do. But what we certainly do is connect them with services in the community, from Homelessness Alliance, who we, we work with, to North Care Mental Health, to uh, many organizations in the state, uh, in connecting these veterans to getting in them the quality of life they deserve. And I appreciate you sharing that, and I'd like to en encourage our viewers that, again, to learn more about Major Ed Polito and uh, his life, his, his work, if you will, in these foundations, Foles of Honor Foundation, and also Warriors for Freedom. Just go to the internet, you can do the search, and you can find out so much more information. Major Ed, a few moments ago, you, you just briefly touched on the word or the thought of suicide. There in your life, the traumatic events in your life that you're facing, depression, why me kind of deal, perhaps. Suicide seems to be, um, too, too big of a topic for returning vets, if you will. So what, yeah. do, what do we do about the, the suicide rate? Because I, I think it's, uh, it's way too much. Well, when you sent me some of the topics that we would like to discuss, I was so moved by the fact that you took the time to do a little research and certainly make this topic one of choice. Losing a veteran is a travesty. Yeah. And uh, it makes me emotional to think about because uh, these are our comrades who go and fight. They don't have a choice but to take the oath and defend the great nation and defend the freedoms that we have. And certainly with our suicide rate, 22 a day, uh, we started an initiative called Remembering the 22. And you can go to the Remembering the 22 uh, my good friend Amber Mulder, who uh, is our the executive director right. at uh, Warriors for Freedom, her and another individual by the name of Chad Alcox uh, taught me that, you know what, we have to have some kind of initiative to promote uh, this epidemic. And we are actually embarking on doing some things with the Folds of Honor Foundation with it to get people to go out and play golf because golf can be a recovery mechanism for people with Warriors for Freedom to go out there and, and actually go hunting or go fishing and then we also have various initiatives that we've promoted, but the thing that was so important for me to highlight was the fact that I had experienced suicidal ideation. Being in the hospital room sure. and having my mom come in and say, you know what, you could sit there and grieve or you can get up and succeed in life, uh, really took a toll on, on me hearing those words of the fact that what she was seeing was a injured vet who was dealing with that silent wound of war. And I almost decided, you know what, how about if I pull the plug on these machines? And how about if I don't go on? But you know what? That's selfish. And it's selfish because you know what? I had a family. Would I be doing what I'm doing today? And certainly, uh, would I be raising awareness around this country about the needs that our veterans have? And so we have 22 taking their life every day. And it is our duty, our honor, and our responsibility to make sure that we uh, cut that number down and certainly, certainly eliminate it. Um, but whether we can do that or not, you know what? We need the American people on our side. We need the support. Sure. And certainly we need to raise awareness and make sure that this is an issue that is being looked at. And it's not an issue just for the military. It's an issue for our young people. Our young people here in Enid, um, in the high schools, uh, in the middle schools, uh, with bullying, uh, there's a lot of issues, internals, and social media plays a huge role in all of that. As great as social media is, there's also some other downfalls to it as well. And certainly we're seeing a lot of social media um, imprints and posts about individuals wanting to take their life, you know. And, and it doesn't help that, you know what, the, around the world that we've got crises going on. And so 
uh, to the people of Jordan and to the people around the world, you know, uh, what we're seeing with these barbarians, you know, it, it plays a role in, in how people do th see things and how it triggers responses to negative uh, uh, situations that we've been in. And certainly uh, the suicide rate has gone up and we've got to make sure that that gets taken care of and that we're raising awareness about it. Well, I certainly appreciate you sharing from your heart today. So. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. My special guest, Major Ed Polito, U.S. Army retired. Major Ed has a new book out, and we'll talk about that right after this. Thank you for staying with us today. I'm Steve Kime with the City of Enid, and you know, my special guest, Major Ed Polito, U.S. Army retired, uh, has just been sharing about his experiences in Iraq and his commitment in his life to veterans in recovery and assistance and just uh, really being a friend to veterans. And so I appreciate Major Ed being here today. And as the viewers can see, um, Warrior for Freedom, Challenge, Triumph, and Change, that's your new book, Major Ed. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, Warrior for Freedom is about the fact that everyone in this country can be a warrior for freedom. You don't have to don on the uniform to make sure that you make an impact in our veterans' lives. And one of the people that really was instrumental in that messaging was my good friend, Brett Dick, who said, you know what, I've never served in uniform, but I have a heart and soul yeah. for what that is all about. And what he said in that story, and of course, Brett is from this area, his family lives here, what Brett said, though, would impact me. He said, you know, when I was a kid, you know, my, my family would take me out and we would go out and clean grave sites and certainly provide support to those veterans that needed that because some of them probably didn't have family. Sure. And to me, uh, that is what really enabled me to, to work with Mary Bartlett, who actually helped me write the book and certainly tell my story of challenges sitting on the battlefield, almost losing my life, Triumph has taken the first step after amputation, and change is living adaptively, knowing that I came back from war changed forever. And that is the premise of the book, but it's also a helping book. It's a book about the fact sure. that what, what are our suicide rates look like in our country? What is a traumatic brain injury? What experiences um, have I gone through that have enabled me to be a leader uh, in this nation and in this state? and promoting veterans' issues. And one of the things that I do a lot with uh, folks around the country, and even with our governor and others, uh, because I sit on the State Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse yeah. Board, uh, good friend Terry White just does an outstanding job of, of promoting mental health awareness, that I learned that I needed to channel and promote and support uh, those efforts. And I thought that uh, writing a book would be a way for people to not only learn my story, but also learn about the critical issues that we face in our state uh, as it deals with mental and physical and wellness issues. And of course, to, to highlight that, I work with Major General uh, Miles Deering, who is now uh, getting ready to take on the post as Secretary of Veterans Affairs and certainly run that office. And in developing you know, what I call plans of action or plans of attack for our state to combat various issues and I think you know the issues that really come to mind to me are veteran suicide, employment, certainly making sure that mental and physical are part of that but then also civic and community involvement and that's what I talk about the book and then I talk about the tenants that really drive me and uh, one of the tenants that I look at is you know it, it's easy to take the, 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 the easy left or, or, the wrong, or the wrong right or you know or the sure. It, it, those are things that to me impact me every day and those are things that I think about that you know what at the end of the day um, I want to make sure that everything that I do is, is purposeful and that's what this book is all about. Well, Major Ed I just appreciate you taking time today to come visit us here in Enid because we're looking for opportunities here on the Enid Television Network. We're looking for opportunities to share stories about uh, local individuals and area individuals that are, are truly making a difference. And so there's the copy of the book, w Wish You Well. Uh, I happened to get a copy of the book. It was under a Christmas tree. Yes. So it was a Christmas present. So I, I appreciate the opportunity to read that. And I enjoyed the photos that you had of former presidents in there. So again, Warrior for, 
for Freedom is, is the name of the book. So you want to check into that? Well, if I could even say one thing about that is the fact that in the oil and gas industry, I do a lot with OERB and, and, uh, and which is Oklahoma Energy Resources sure. Board and OIPA. And I know that the energy sector is huge here. And so if there's anybody that wants to take veterans out hunting or um, certainly want to provide jobs, uh, you know, I, that's what we're here for is to provide support to this community and to make sure that this community stays vibrant as a veteran friendly community with the resources it needs to thrive and be successful. And I think that's what veterans need. People can go to majored.org and get the book and just learn about what the work that we're doing, but also how they can get involved in becoming a warrior for freedom. Yeah. I'm going to ask a special favor of you. Okay. I'd like for you to look at that camera as we close our program today. Okay. And Major Ed, speak to that veteran or the individual that is watching this show and share with them what you need to share and, and conclude it, if you will, on how to, how to reach out to you, your phone number and, and websites and stuff. Would okay. you do that for me? I will. And thank you so much uh, to the city of Enid for your involvement. It's our pleasure. Uh, the mayor and all the council members and certainly... Uh, the, the fact that uh, this community is a veteran-friendly community to me uh, is very positive. On the other hand, first of all, I better say thank you for your service. If you're a veteran or you've served in the National Guard or certainly on active duty uh, in the Air Force, um, and here in the Air National Guard here in the state of Oklahoma, thank you for your service to this great, great nation. Uh, the 45th is a great group in our, country, in our country, but also in our history of our state and what they've been able to do. So please support our veterans in any way that you can. Uh, you can go to warriorsforfreedom.org uh, to find out more about how you can get involved with providing mental and physical and wellness support, whether it's hunting or the outdoors, uh, by getting them connected through golf. And then you can go to Folds of Honor Foundation, which provides spouses and children of the fallen wounded educational scholarships, Folds of Honor Foundation, and find out a little bit more. If you have a 10% disability rating or above, we will give you a scholarship. And certainly, uh, we have got Oklahoma State University, which we work with, and so many other institutions in this state. But certainly, uh, let us know if we can do anything for you. My number is 405-833-9092. My book is majored.org. And God bless the United States of America. Hoorah! Major Ed, uh, I know that coins or medallions is a big deal yeah. in, in the military and the service. And I want to present to you, on behalf of the mayor and the city commissioners, I want to present our Enid coin. On the back side, it has the state of Oklahoma and it has the uh, little star so you know where Enid is. But it says, Boundless, Original, and Vibrant. So, Major Ed, thank, thank you, you so for much. your time today. And thank on behalf you. of the city of Enid, thank we want to so present much. you that coin that uh, you'll remember this date, this interview, okay. this opportunity to share with the veterans. Thank you. And uh, thanks for being here today. It's been good. Well, thank you. And like I said, God bless America and Absolutely. God bless the city of Enid and everything that okay. you all do for its citizens. Okay. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking time to join us as, as we continue to highlight individuals in Enid and around the state that truly make a difference in uh, their personal and professional lives. And thank you for being a part of that. I'm Steve Kime with the city of Enid, and I look forward to seeing you next time as we have another special guest. Until that time, make it a great day.